Hi, I'm Alana. I'm Joshua. And I'm the owner of Dance Like a Cupcake. And you're watching Live, Live at, at Nine. Nine. Election Day, Tuesday, November 5th. Welcome to Live at 9, where Memphis comes alive. Along with your top news, weather with Todd Demers, and trending topics in Coffee with Corey, here's a look at our guest lineup. Today, Tennessee Secretary of State Trey Hargett is joining us to help make sure that you are ready to head to the polls and know what to do if you encounter any Election Day problems. Plus, election expert Mike Carpenter is joining us to break down his local and national predictions who's gonna win right and see what we might see in the days coming then we have certified parenting coach Alexandra Nolan helping parents fulfill their children's essential psychological needs finally upskill Mid-South's Diane Pobich and TCAT Memphis president Dr. Gwen Sutton are gonna explain how they're training the next generation for Memphis jobs in high demand fields but first be sure to record the show so you never miss an episode and connect with us online at our website website live at 9.tv. That's also our handle on social media. Topping our news here at 9, Election Day is here. Americans will cast their ballots for either former President Donald Trump or current Vice President Kamala Harris in one of the nation's most historic presidential races. They'll also be determining which party will control both the House or the Senate. More than 81 million people voted early this election. That's about half the number of all the people who voted in 2020. Arkansas will award six electoral votes in the presidential election. Voters in the natural state will also decide a number of other races, including U.S. House, State Supreme Court, State Senate, and House, along with some ballot measures. Today, polls are open until 7.30 p.m., and you must have a photo ID with you in order to vote. So have that photo ID. And officials say if you are in line to cast your ballot at that time, you will still be allowed to vote even if the doors close. Mississippi also has six electorals in the presidential election poll in the Magnolia State are open and will close at 7 o'clock tonight. Voters in Mississippi will cast their ballots for judicial races, U.S. House and Senate and much more. And whichever candidate captures the most votes in Tennessee will receive 11 presidential electoral votes from the volunteer state. Tennessee voters will weigh in on the race for the White House, as well as races for Congress and the state legislature, along with local elections in West Tennessee polls close at 7 p.m. Thanks to the AARP Tennessee, voters can roll to the polls this election day. They've teamed up with the Memphis Area Transit Authority to offer free rides to cast your ballot. Matta says a trip to vote will not cost you a thing if you take a bus, Matta Plus or Matta Ready Today. Not only will we be watching the polls on this election day, much of the greater Memphis area is also gonna have an eye on the skies today. It's pretty windy right now and the clouds are moving through. Grip your hands on any paper or anything that will fly in the wind. Weather expert Todd Demers tracking a chance for some rain and here with the very latest. Hi Todd. Hey there Kanji. You know we've been talking about this all week long. I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone when the rain rolls in. I think it's all a big question about timing and when that rain gets here. How it might impact you as you are trying to head out to the polls today. I would imagine a lot of folks would be trying to head out during lunchtime or sometime during the day. I urge you to download the WRNG weather app. That way you can check Storm Tracker 3S before you go out and then you'll know whether or not you can wait a little while for the rain to move through or you can go ahead and get out before it arrives. At this hour, Storm Tracker 3S has found some heavier rainfall. It's down to our south. There's even a little special weather statement for the Pine Bluff area because of some brief gusting winds along with some very small size hail. But that's pretty isolated in nature because I don't even see a whole lot of lightning associated with that. So today, this is a forecast model. This is a six hour forecast model. It is showing you that the majority of this rainfall is going to start to work its way into the area shortly after lunch. So between about 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., the best when it comes to the timing of this activity, pushing across the immediate Memphis and the metro area. Southerly winds will continue to gust. Temperatures will try to climb through the mid and upper 70s. Rain will be likely at times heavy, and there will be some cooler weather to talk about a little bit later on this week. You'll see what I'm talking about 
talking about with that with the seven day in just a moment. But for today, 79 degrees, the wind and the rain is going to be with us throughout the afternoon and for this evening as well. But that rain will be tapering off. So still to come, we want to talk even more timing. I want to be even more specific on when to expect that rain and how it might impact you as you're heading out and about for today and for the rest of the week. So today, probably not the best day to go out and try to get that car washed, by the way. Tomorrow conditions will improve. I'd probably wait until Thursday. And remember, if you are heading out to the polls today, and I certainly hope you are, be expecting those scattered showers as early as lunchtime today. And those scattered showers are going to linger throughout the course of the afternoon. Much more with Storm Tracker 3S and your complete forecast, Kanji, coming your way in just a couple of minutes. Thanks so much, Todd, for keeping us weather aware. Live at 9's Election Day coverage continues on this morning. A political analyst Mike Carpenter is joining us in the studio here to offer insight into the race for the White House, uh, local ballots to help us navigate the ballot itself, plus learn how two groups are offering job seekers a way to bridge the skills gap in order to expand their resumes. We'll have all that with our guests coming up here and more. Welcome back to Live at 9. Thank you for tuning in on this Election Tuesday. Your trip to the polls could come with some rain later today. Weather expert Todd Demers is keeping track of what we can expect. He's here now with an update on our Election Day forecast. Hey, Todd. Hey there, Kanji. I think today's rain is going to be inconvenient at worst right now. I'm not anticipating a severe weather outbreak or anything like that. But, you know, anytime we have some brief heavy rainfall or gusting winds, wet roadways or some slipping and sliding, and going on out there. So I urge you to try to stay off the roads best as possible, at least during those rain periods. And the majority of that rain, I think, will be coming through between about 10 this morning and 2 this afternoon. Right now, we continue with the cloudy skies across the area on the views from our Gold Strike Skyview camera network. Even the tower cam is actually looking pretty nice right about now out east. But boy, let me tell you, we have had some he very heavy rainfall across southern portions of Missouri. This is Storm Tracker 3S with the storm reports coming in showing that heavy rainfall. This late latest line has not been producing much in the way of severe weather. We do not have a severe weather threat. There's no like 
marginal, slight, enhanced risk of severe weather. We have a couple of isolated storms that have been bringing some higher winds across southeastern parts of Arkansas. I'm watching those carefully, and the forecast models are continuing to show this activity moving across the river starting early this afternoon. So right about the tail end of your lunch hour, I think, is when this rain is going to be making its way right across the river. It's actually been slowing down a little bit over the past couple of days as far as the timing. So again, be thinking shortly after lunchtime today for that line of showers to move across the river. 80 was yesterday's high. 67 and 46 are considered the norms for this time of year. That may be hard to believe. 67, the normal high. We've been so much above normal lately that it's been difficult to believe. That's what we expect for November. Southerly winds are gusting right now. 72 degrees, the current temperature. You can see these gusting winds finally beginning to settle down later this evening once that cold front moves through the area. So let's watch the the timing once again as this line of showers finally pushes into the Mid-South. We keep mentioning that time frame between about 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's when the rain will start to make its way across the area. And just when you think the rain is out of here, we do have some more scattered showers for later this evening. This is around midnight into early tomorrow morning before that rain finally begins to settle down. The northerly winds start to kick in and the cooler air starts to filter into the Mid-South as well. This is the graph forecast model. I use this oftentimes to get a closer look at the timing of the these storms. This particular model says the majority of this rain will get here between about 2 and 3 o'clock this afternoon and linger into the evening rush before moving out. Now, you're also watching those pop up showers, as I mentioned, later tonight into early tomorrow morning. And this is an area that could see some heavier rainfall as well as we make our way into early tomorrow and the northerly winds start to kick in. So the heaviest of the rainfall, the latest models say northeastern parts of Mississippi, most of us between 1 and 2 inches of rain as this works its way through the area and the severe storm Storms Prediction Center has kind of increase the area where we will see that marginal risk of severe weather. It now does include parts of the Mid-South and the immediate Memphis and the metro area. That's an indication that we could see a few isolated thunder showers rumbling through the area. Tropical Storm Rafael is continuing to grow, likely to become a hurricane in the northern Gulf of Mexico through the end of the week. The big question is, will it have an impact on our weather? Computer models, one for the Europeans taking it all the way over into Mexico. Another one is just kind of having it kind of fizzle out right there in the Gulf of Mexico, so that's something we'll watch carefully. But let's take care of today first, shall we? Breezy and warm gusting winds, the rain midday, and then tomorrow the rain's ending, the north winds are back, and the temperatures are trying to cool down a little bit as we approach the weekend. The weekend weather is going to be greatly impacted by what's happening down in the Gulf of Mexico. So I see these scattered showers for the weekend, but that doesn't mean change around your weekend plans just quite yet. There's a good chance this forecast may change as we head into the weekend, so I'll continue to watch that as well as Storm Tracker 3S very carefully for you throughout the morning and into the early afternoon hours as we await the arrival of this latest line of showers. All right, thank you so much, Todd. A local partnership is working to arm potential employees with the tools they need to work in industries that are high demand like manufacturing, technology and construction, just to name a few. The following portion of Live at Nine is sponsored by Upscale Mid-South. And to learn more, we are live with their senior project director, Diane Povich, along with Dr. Gwen Sutton, who is the president of Tennessee College of Applied Technology. Memphis. Good morning, ladies. Thanks so much for coming in. Good morning, Good morning. and thank you for having us. Glad this is really a critical discussion here this morning, so it just means a lot to this community. If Diane, if you could talk about the partnership that you have with Upscale and TCAP. Absolutely, we'd be happy to. Just a little background, the Upscale Mid-South Initiative is spearheaded by the University of Memphis, and really it's to build the bridge those skills gaps that employers have identified. And how do we do this work? Well, we do it through partnerships with the TCAT Memphis and other TCATs and community colleges and key players who provide skills training to individuals who are underemployed, unemployed, and to incumbent workers who are currently need to advance in their current jobs. So with that said, we leverage their skills the educational department to provide skills training with in-demand occupations to us that will allow them to receive a industry credential in a very short amount of time. And I did say accelerated. This does not preclude our, our course programs from um, obtaining value as a traditional education. We have not changed those courses. We have just condensed them to be accelerated in six months or less. Oh. And 
Yeah, and Dr. Sutton, uh -huh. what kinds of programs, let's talk about the industries, why this was important to TCAT to be involved in this initiative. Thank you. So in our hub in Memphis, the transportation hub and logistics hub, it was important to focus on advanced manufacturing. And uh, one of the programs that we are operating is a precision measurement program, which is a snippet of our machine to technology program. With that program, a student has an opportunity to earn a NIMS certification. These are industry recognized certifications that uh, the individuals can potentially be promoted, earn more wages, and for those who are not in the field, it gives them exposure. And they may not have time to dedicate a full 20 months or 12 months to a program. This gives them an opportunity to take a shorter program, be exposed, come back at a later time to complete the entire program. So that's just one of them. And then we also have the Electric Vehicle Production Technician Program. And yes, ma'am, and we do have a uh, IT Fundamentals Program. And we're also doing the Drone Program as well. Hello, we are, this is moving into the next century. Is there, are there any costs associated? How does this work and how do the students benefit? Yeah, thank you for asking. So the Upskill Mid-South has the ability to sponsor at 100% Whoa. for those who are eligible. Go to our website, scan that code, and you can apply directly online and you will know immediately within 48 hours whether you're eligible for our program and that will immediately connect you to one of our TCATs or community colleges or other training providers. And so keep in mind, this will advance your career in today and tomorrow to meet employers' needs in our workforce pipeline. So again, go to our website and um, we will be happy to. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm blown away when yeah. you said that you can 100% support. Um, is there anything that you could just share quickly about the eligibility? Sure. So those of you who are unemployed or underemployed, keep in mind, those are individuals who work less than 30 hours, who are earning $20 or less, and who have been employed for quite a bit of time and disconnected from the workforce. So we would like to make sure that we are providing all of you an opportunity to be eligible. And those who are incumbent workers, you are the individual who is either in a contract position or earning less than $20 an hour or have not been able to advance in your current career. So again, those are the individuals that would be eligible for my program. So please take a look at our website and let's see, help you get into um, a new career. Teamwork makes the dream work. Love this. Thank you so much for coming in and helping to employ our community. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate and the preceding you. portion of Live at Nine, sponsored by Upskill Mid-South. Coming up, we are going to check in with Mike Carpenter, political strategist. He is predicting who's going to win local and national races. Hmm. He has his crystal ball over there. So get ready. We'll be right back.
The polls are open in Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi. Voters casting their ballots for the next leader of the free world and a number of other state, federal, and municipal races. Mike Carpenter, the principal at Carpenter Civic Strategies, is here in Shelby County, and he is joining us this morning. His strategist back on the red couch to talk about what is at stake this November. Okay, just what's the buzz out there? What are you hearing about people just and their feelings? Well, I think I think everybody's tired of it. <laughs> just get it over with. <laughs> I think there's a lot of fatigue uh, with 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 the election, and and folks are ready to to know who the next president's going to be, and then uh, then take a deep breath and and go about their lives. I think is the main thing that I'm hearing. I mean, and I know. Okay, we're, we are talking strategy. You're going to uh, make some predictions, but can you just talk about you know seeing um, maybe. You know, you know, ballot boxes being burned. Um, we're seeing um, that there, Microsoft found that there was someone, uh, some possible tampering from different countries. Um, I mean, just what are those thoughts in, when you think about past elections and now? Well, I think the thing that everyone has to remember is that is that overwhelmingly our elections are secure. Um, I think that most of the secretaries of state around uh, around the country will tell you that, particularly after 2016 and 2020, that uh, that security has been. Uh, upgraded a great deal, that extra precautions are taken, and that the vast majority of, of, of the votes uh, in, in, in the country are safe and secure. You know, you say that, and I think that that's something that's important to touch on because, I mean, there was one, people think that um, people are partisan in these different positions, so um, there's just this hope that the, the system itself will stay nonpartisan. So let's just talk about uh, some early clues about how you think the election uh, will pan out for the presidential uh, election. Sure. So, um, so I'll put my caveat on this, which okay. is that so many things can can turn an election, even in the last right, minute, right. especially an election that's as close as it is. But there are some key indicators that I'm looking at, and one of those. Uh, and so, so let me say who I think um, is likely to be the next. Who's going to win? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's going to be Kamala Harris. I think she'll be the first uh, female president in the United wow. States. And I also think it's not going to be quite as close as the polls are saying. I think uh, she probably wins the popular vote by three to four percentage points. Is, is my guess. And there are three things that, I, that I'm really looking at, three major things. One of those is that there have been 78 million early votes cast as of, as of today. And of those, when you, when you ask people who've already voted who they voted for, Kamala Harris is winning overwhelmingly in most of the swing states. A couple of exceptions to that, but that means she's banked those votes. So whatever happens on election day, rain, storms, car crashes, traffic jams, uh, kids sick, whatever, um, she's got those votes in the bank. And so it's a lot for, I think, the Trump campaign to overcome uh, on election day, though I think he, there, there will be very high turnout today and that, uh, and that a lot of his supporters will come out. The second thing is the gender gap. Women are overwhelmingly, especially older women who, and educated women who tend to vote, uh, by educated I mean college degree uh, or advanced degree, um, that that uh, they're voting overwhelmingly for Kamala Harris. And so I think women are gonna turn this. And then the third factor is that when you look at the polling among registered voters, but you sort of focus in the likely voters, those who all, almost always vote, Kamala Harris has a lead there as well. So I think that she wins the popular vote. I think she wins the elect electoral college by you know roughly 298 to 240. I mean, that is, these are very specific numbers that you're saying. <laughs> I mean, wh how are you calculating the, the Electoral College? Is it just well, the states that you're... Yeah, so I think uh, we all know that there are seven swing states. Um, I think the, the blue wall, so to speak, which is Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania are going to hold for Kamala Harris, though Pennsylvania is going to be super, super tight. Um, I think that she wins Nevada, even though Nevada has been uh, running a little bit ahead for uh, former President Trump. Um, I think that um, I think she wins uh, wins there because historically Nevada has voted Democratic in the presidential race, and I think she has a shot at um, at either North Carolina or Georgia. Probably Georgia's more likely. And then the outlier that's really caused a lot of uh, a lot of excitement, I guess, uh, is Iowa. Iowa, which is considered a red state, uh, a local pollster there uh, who's very respected and very good, says that Kamala Harris is leading there by three points. Now, whether that's Iowa specific or whether that's some foreshadowing of, of other states uh, that 
that that didn't get a lot of attention. Uh, it's probably just an Iowa thing, but uh, if Kamala Harris wins that, uh, then I think that's going to shock a lot of people. <clears throat> okay, let's get local. What are your predictions on the referendums, if we could blaze through those? Sure. Uh, the the uh, the binding referendums, the ones that deal with the mayoral election and and setting the pay, I think those are going to pass. I think for uh, most people, those sound pretty reasonable, and and less uh, they're all new, got some nuances to them. But unless you've really dug into them, I think most people will vote yes on those. On the three non-binding gun referendums, I think because of uh, the the level of violence and gun crime here, I think you're going to see uh, heavy support for those. Um, for those who actually stay in the booth long enough to get there, those are very long <laughs> referendums. So long. And if you haven't read them in advance, you may just choose to skip those. So there will be some ballot drop off, but I think probably 70 percent plus uh, will vote for those referendums. Okay, and there's there's one local race that you you specifically wanted to address. Um, talk about the race. It's District 97. Yeah, District 97, uh, Representative uh, John Gillespie versus challenger, uh, the, the Democrat, uh, Jesse Huseth. I think Huseth is probably going to edge uh, Gillespie. Really? Uh, now, I wouldn't be surprised if it went the other way, just as I wouldn't be surprised if the presidential went the other way. But <laughs> I think that um, I think that turnout uh, in this district, which leans Democratic for Kamala Harris, is going to benefit Jesse Huseth. And uh, and I think he probably, probably edges out John Gillespie in this Can one. Can you speak historically what that means uh, to the state of Tennessee? Because, I mean, we are um, a red state. Right. Um, probably not a lot in terms of the supermajority. Uh -huh. I mean, certainly the, the representation in the district will change. Uh, there will be another voice uh, on the uh, on the Democratic side. Uh, but uh, but the supermajority is going to hold in, in the state by far. And so, um, so I, I don't think it makes much difference there. One quick thing, uh, looking back at the presidential election, there are a lot of people concerned that um, you know, the votes that, you know, will the count actually be as is said once the vote goes in today, tonight, right? Like, I mean, will, will we actually have a battle after the fact? Your thoughts on that? Yeah, if it's uh, if it's close or a state like Pennsylvania that can make the difference, uh, I think there definitely will be a legal battle. Um, I think uh, just because of the way Pennsylvania counts votes um, and, and Wisconsin, for that matter, um, I think that that probably what's going to happen is that we probably won't know for sure who the winner is um, until maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not sorry, <laughs> Wednesday or Thursday. And um, and then. Uh, and then after that, if it's close, I mean, both sides have their lawyers ready. They have a team of lawyers. They're looking at various scenarios. So expect expect some lawsuits to be filed. All right. And thank you so much. We are hoping for no hanging chads. All right. Thank you so much. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Coming up, parenting tips from lifestyle expert and newly certified parenting coach, Alexandra Nolan. Hey, Alexandra. <laughs> She's coming up next day with us.
We're back on Live at 9. Now, here's Kanji. Every parent wants the best for their children, and local lifestyle expert Alexandra Nolan is no exception. In fact, she's now officially a certified parenting coach, and this morning, Alexandra is here to talk about some basic psychological needs of every child. Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Okay, you've got to tell me, um, why, why was it important to be certified as a parenting coach? Well, you know, as a lifestyle influencer, I work with a lot of different brands and I came, I started working with All About Parenting and I started taking their uh, parenting courses. Fell in love with the science-backed information. Mm. It's science-backed, it's just not stories from other parents, which are helpful, but science-backed is key, right? When, we're, when it comes to- Yeah, no anecdotes. Raising, right. <laughs> and so I did it and I loved it and I was like, I need to get certified because I want to share this information officially with parents you know, all over the world actually. I've been doing webinars, UK, Australia, had some folks from Sweden yesterday, um, and it's just amazing, and I just want to spread the love and all of the information. Okay, let's talk about the three psychological needs. I know, uh, this is a really cool concept I'd never heard of, but we, all humans, actually have three basic psychological needs. So there is the need for autonomy, that's the need to have some sort of level of control over your life. There is the need for competence. So that's like, I want to do it on my own. I can, you know, being able to be competent in thing kind of explains itself. I want to be good. Yeah, I want to be good at what I do. And then there's the need for relatedness. So that's the need to be close to someone. And we all have these needs. Um, I wish I would have known about this earlier in life. It would have explained a lot of things. But we all have these needs and children are no different. And so when parents recognize these needs and try to meet these needs, kids grow up to be responsible, happy, um, high self-esteem, well inside as adults. Well inside, that is such yeah. a great way to put it. Because I think that we focus a lot on the the, the food, shelter, and just, just like, Right. those types of needs and the we're not thinking needs. about what's going on you know between our ears yeah inside yeah and so when like for instance when the need for autonomy isn't satisfied you can get uh, notice some kind of nasty behaviors from your child like lying aggression mm -hmm. um, hiding things because when they feel like they don't have control over their life and that's taken away then they they lash out and and they rebel and and they kind of Revenge, like there's the four R's too. I don't want to get into all of it. Like, I could no, no. Revenge, well, um, and and rebelling, and and you'll notice some of these behaviors because they don't feel like they have control over their life. Um, the need for relatedness. So when a parent, um, let's say we get upset with our kids, and we kind of shut down and we become cold, give the cold shoulder, because as adults we learned that we don't want to encourage negative behavior. So when someone does something bad to us, we just kind of shut down, turn away. But what does that have? What does that mean for a kid? So when you do that to a child, they learn that their the parents' love is conditional, not unconditional. Mm, mm -hmm. And so they learn that when I'm bad, my mom doesn't um, want to be around me. I hate to even be as harsh to say my mom doesn't love me when I'm bad. But that's what our behavior is showing, mm -hmm. right? Um, so uh, like recognizing these things and understanding as a parent how we can correct our own behaviors and lead for our children, it really does a lot for our, our, for our children in their lives. It's really hard to undo um, habits, right? Yes. Um, so if you could talk about, you're going to uh, be holding um, a web event, right, to talk with yes. parents and guardians. Yes, I think we have a QR code for it too to sign up. I'm doing um, a free live event online called The Five Unconscious Habits That We as Parents Have That Harm Our, our Children. Wow. And we go through the three basic psychological needs, but I also share five habits that we don't even know that we do that can really damage our children children irreparably. Wow, can you give us one tip um, that can help with those three psychological needs? What, the tip for me is being able to, learning about the needs, first of all. Yes. I mean, and, and it goes beyond just kind of what I have in this short little segment to talk about, and I'll sh I have two hours in the live event, oh, okay, so we nice. go through everything, I answer questions at the end, but, but learning about them and then consciously uh, making an effort to change our habits as parents so that we can be better for our children. Ooh, that's a big one. All right, yeah. so yes, check out uh, the web events and become a better parent with Alexandra Nolan. 
Well, and thank you so much for um, evolving, wanting to evolve, and then wanting to share it with others to make the world a better place. Thank you. That's thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, and straight ahead, a look at some of the top at-home beauty buys that will help you get more bank for your buck. Those epic discounts coming up. With your busy lifestyle, getting to the spa is just out of reach. That doesn't mean that you have to miss out on pampering yourself. We all need that, right? Karen Fursell is standing by with the best prizes in this week's epic discounts from consumer resource bestreviews.com. I am Karen Purcell with bestreviews.com. Make sure to take out your phone and scan that QR code. We're gonna unlock some great deals today. We're talking about beauty at home. And one of the products that I love is this at home beauty spa. It comes with so many accessories. It takes you out of the spa. It saves you so much time and money. You've got the very trendy headband, the steamer, you've got the roller. It allows you to really infuse your skincare and it's something that it's a no brainer for me. I use it all the time. The next product we have is by Nuva Dermis. This is an advanced scar gel. This is made with really great ingredients that are gonna hydrate your skin and really help get rid of those scars that you might have accumulated over time. It's something that you can do at home. You do not have to go to the dermatologist. And this is a product that did really well in the best reviews testing lab, so we swear by it. The next product's by Luma. It is something that I use every day. This is 72 hours of odor control. This is a whole body deodorant. Let me just tell you something. The scents are great. It comes in tangerine, a lavender, and unscented. It doesn't leave any residue on your skin or on your clothes. I absolutely swear by it. And finally, we have by Auraglow. This is an at-home teeth whitening kit. We all want that perfect smile for the holidays, and this is how you're gonna get it. This is something that uses blue light technology, which means it really, really works. You're gonna take the gel, you're gonna put it into the tray, and then you can just watch TV, which is what I do. And you can really whiten your teeth to like two or three shades lighter, but it's gonna look natural, and you're gonna look perfect for the holidays. Well, let's take a look at all four products that we had today in our beauty at home segment. Be sure to take out your phone and scan that QR code. We want to unlock some great deals and get ready to scan, shop, and save. 
and Best Reviews is owned by our parent company, Nexstar. You can find more on these products and much more where to buy them. That's on our website, live at 9.tv. And once you're there, just click on the Marketplace tab and then Epic Discounts. Coming up, ballot selfies, a famous layered tri trifle dessert, and ways to soothe the anxiety of traveling. The Coffee with Tori is next. It's time for Coffee with Corey, brewed in part by Kroger. It's election day, and I love how you did the red and blue. I know, You're a little pop so of color. Patriotic. I love being able to do both. You know, it's just part of it. Look for the celebration. Yes. Right, so, our first story is going to be uh, going to the polls, right? So, for starters, lots of folks are voting in today's election. And while you should be very proud of doing your civic duty, a selfie to commemorate that could land you in hot water. Okay, so ballot selfies are photos taken by voters showing their completed election ballots. Well, ballot selfies rose to prominence in the late 2000s when smartphones usually uh, obviously started having digital cameras and that became widespread. Well, there's a problem. It might be a crime depending on where you live. Well, there are no federal laws prohibiting you from sharing your ballot selfies, but taking photos of a ballot is against the law in roughly a quarter of the U.S. according to ballotpedia.org. So as of September, 26 states allow ballot selfies. Well, here in the, in the Mid-South, Mississippi says they are not prohibited. Tennessee allows ballot selfies with absentee or mail-in ballots only. And for voters in the natural state, snap away in Arkansas, no matter which state you vote in or how you vote, you can always, always, always take the I voted sticker selfie outside of the building. Because <laughs> that's what you normally see. I, norm I normally do not see anybody taking a selfie inside. Um, we well, can't in Tennessee anyway, um, but I, even on social media, I don't see anybody taking a photo with their filled out ballot from inside, um, but I do see tons of people showing the I voted sticker selfie for sure. I know, I remember when uh, Justin Timberlake took the <laughs> The ballot selfie. He did, and there was yeah, it was like years back, and there was drama. Yeah, it was drama. I missed that. But it promoted um, voting, and no. I'm just like, yeah, and I, it so it's is it only voting. Mississippi that doesn't allow it. Um, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I did the 
out of with my did did you do selfies at the election polls? Um, I will this afternoon. Okay. Oh, vote. okay. Yeah, I'll do my Happy little voting. I voted selfie with my little I voted sticker. Do it do outside it. the building. <laughs> Right. Okay, so do you remember the famous uh, later tri trifle dessert featured on the episode of Friends? Well, the Rachel Green trifle kit could be yours just in time for Thanksgiving. So HelloFresh, of course, is a food delivery service that provides recipes and groceries for customers to prepare, to prepare meals at home. Okay, so in honor of the 30th anniversary of that episode of Friends with the disaster dessert creation that the character Rachel Green prepared, HelloFresh, will deliver one to your home. And the company says they will even help you not botch it like Rachel did. Well, these limited edition kits feature all the ingredients and a step-by-step -step guide needed to create the character's mix matched desserts. Half English trifle meets shepherd pie. Do you remember that? Well, you don't have to have a HelloFresh subscription and you can also buy the kit online right now for $34.99 plus shipping, free shipping that is. Are you a cake person? Uh, no. I mean, I, yes, I am, but like not that. Like I'm not yeah. that into Friends where I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to do that. Like that's so iconic. Yeah, and shepherd pie is savory, so there's yeah. It's kind of like a. I mean, you know, I missed out on that. I, I was a morning anchor, and so I had to sleep. Yeah. You know, you know how, and so yeah. I missed it, and I never been didn't catch up on so any. I never really saw or, Friends. Yeah. yeah. I missed out on pop culture. But you know, no. I'm all right. I think I'm all right. You're gonna, you're gonna be all right. <laughs> you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna be just fine. And finally, okay, so lots of creatures serve as therapy animals these days, and that includes a llama and alpaca at one airport. So according to NPR, Benny the llama and Captain Jack the alpaca <laughs> offer their services to travelers at the Portland International Airport. Okay, so within minutes, dozens of people will line up for a chance to have their picture taken with one of these animals. Well, part of the Portland Airport's animal therapy program, the animals visit every few weeks from the farm where they live. Well, therapy programs with animals in airports are different from emotional support or mm. service animals, which typically travel with individuals by contrast, right? So therapy animals are insured and credentialed through organizations like animal hospitals and industry groups and subject to little state and federal regulations. So when they're not at the airport, Captain Jack and Benny have a very busy schedule that includes corporate events and weddings. So if I was just rolling through the Portland airport and saw Captain Jack and Benny, I would for sure want to take a selfie. Run to them. No, I, I mean, no, I wouldn't want to scare them. I don't want to spook them. You don't want to, but right. I am like, yes, I yeah. am here for that. Because I think people get stressed out at airports and this is one way to kind of calm those nerves, pet away. Have you ever had a cry goodbye? Like, have you ever been to the airport and you were saying bye and you cried because you were missing yeah. the person mm, immediately? It's been a minute. I know I have. I, I, I'm a crier though. Yeah. But I, I'm like, llamas and alpacas, they're different, but they're friends. Yeah. They're in the same, they're, I'm like, they're in the members of the same family. Yeah. But I'm like, what, so what, alpaca, them, llama, what? Like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> so cute. All right. Yeah. Hey, see you tomorrow. Yes. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back everyone to Live at 9. We're across the Mid-South today. The big story is going to be rain trying to work its way back into the area. Storm Tracker 3S has already found plenty of that across portions of Missouri with a line of showers and even a few isolated thunder showers across portions of Arkansas. All of this is heading in our direction, but I think it's still at least a couple of hours away. So again, the isolated heavier showers are the ones that have been producing some gusting winds and some brief heavy rain, but I do not really have a severe weather outbreak or concern what we have our marginal risk of stronger storms pushing through and the six hour forecast model is showing you that between now and noon is when the bulk of this rain is going to try to move across the area and then through the early afternoon time frame more of those scattered showers now gusting southerly winds are continuing right now south winds are at 20 we're at 72 72 degrees with more gusting winds throughout the early afternoon until the cold front pushes through the area it'll probably be over overnight before we really start to experience some of these north and northwesterly winds and some slightly cooler air will try to work its way back into the mid-south and temperatures will be noticeably cooler over the next couple of days but just keep in the back of your mind we still have this rain to get through. Watch carefully though as we look at these numbers. This is later this afternoon about 3.30. Between about noon and 3 is when I believe the heaviest of that rainfall will work across the area. We'll get a bit of a break for the rush hour, but that doesn't mean the rain is totally out of here. More scattered showers during the overnight hours and then into early tomorrow. Northeastern portions of Mississippi looks like it'll catch the heaviest of the rain. And you see that on the latest rainfall forecast models with almost three inches of rain down in the Oxford area and just about everyone else between about an inch to an inch and a half. And I mentioned that marginal risk of severe weather from the severe storms prediction center. Also keeping an eye on tropical storm Raphael right now just with 60 mile an hour winds, but it's expected to grow into hurricane status across the northern Gulf of Mexico. But computer models are all over the place. Some models are taking it to the north. Some are taking it over here to the west. That's one of those situations we'll watch carefully for you as well. But the big story is today, the chances for rain and some gusting winds as you're trying to get out and vote. And then for tomorrow, the northerly winds trying to cool things down. I'm watching the weekend because what happens in the Gulf of Mexico may have a big impact on our weather as far as the clouds and the rain are concerned. But at least the temperatures are going to be cooling off a little bit for us as we head through the weekend into early next week. An update on that rain, Kanji coming up today on the News at Noon. And Todd, you said the words cooling off soon. Temperatures will cool and many children in the greater Memphis area will need to stay warm and a way to do that. WREG's annual Coats for Kids campaign is underway. We are asking the Mid-South to donate new and gently used coats for children in pre-K through high school from now until November 15th. There are drop off spots set up all across Shelby County and into North Mississippi. You can head over to our website live at nine TV and click on coats for kids to learn more about where to take your donations. The Daily Show team jumps into election night and Mariah Carey meets her twin. Don Backus has your eye on entertainment report. The Daily Show goes live tonight in the special The Daily Show presents a live election night special with Jon Stewart. Indecision 2024, nothing we can do about it now. Stewart and The Daily Show team will provide updates and analysis from seven swing states, plus tips on surviving the post-election. The hour-long special airs on Comedy Central and simulcast on MTV, CMT, TV Land, Pop, Logo, and the Paramount Network. Mariah Carey has a twin in wax. Madame Tussauds in New York unveiled the look-alike just ahead of oh Carrie's Christmas time tour. Wax Mariah is my new best friend. The museum says 20 artists sculpted, painted, and carefully captured the likeness that the pop star calls surreal. Someone's here. Can you see how she got in? And a mysterious woman suddenly arrives at a family's post-apocalyptic bunker to shake up their daily lives in the new musical film, The End. Tilda Swinton and Michael Shannon play mother and father. Son is a naive 20-something who's never seen the outside world and is fascinated by the newcomer girl who upsets the family's delicate balance. I just don't understand why she's here. It's like she has an agenda. The end arrives in theaters December 6th. That's your Ion Entertainment. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. 
We'd like to thank you for joining us for Live at 9. Coming up tomorrow on our show, we are talking about creating safer neighborhoods as Memphis Allies Executive Director Susan Deason and Director of Community Relations Javante Porter Sr. share the impact of their work to reduce gun violence across Memphis. Plus, if you're an animal lover, New Beginnings Animal Rescue will have our pet of the week ready for a new home. Also, O Sweet Skin Care owner Valencia Leonard is going to show us how to make natural skin care products in the studio. A fun treat for yourself, um, even do it with a friend. And we're getting festive as Hernando transforms into a Victorian holiday scene for Dickens of a Christmas. So we're going to have Mayor Chip Johnson, Gia Matheny, and the Stay Alive singers performing. So that'll be fun. Um, I do want to make one thing that you should know if you are visiting for um, the Kojic Convocation. We've learned that MATA um, on Main Street is going to be running from 6.45 a.m. to 11 p.m. or so. This is according to uh, Bishop Brandon Porter, and he wanted you to know that, you know, the trolley stopped working there. Well, now the buses are going to be working for the convocation. Also, the Convention and Visitors Bureau is offering buses for the Saints from major hotels downtown. So good stuff. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have an amazing day, everybody. One content segment during Live at 9 was paid for by Upskill Mid-South.